All right, you guys, welcome back to another video. So today I have five of the best M4A1 class setups that you should be using in both multiplayer and in Warzone. Now, I previously did another video like this a couple seasons ago, so I figured I'd bring you guys an updated list of the five different M4A1 setups that you should be using. And let's be real here, man. Everybody uses the M4A1, so I pretty much have everything for everybody, no matter if you're an aggressive player or a laid-back type of player or you like playing Warzone, pretty much have different selections for you to choose from. So I just want to make a clarification that most of these class setups are going to be fairly similar because since then we've been able to dial in on what are the attachments that actually matter on the M4A1. So we're going to be deep diving in later on in the video. I'm going to show you a website that shows you actual stats and the reasons behind why I chose what I chose. So if you're brand new to the channel, make sure to hit that subscribe button so you can make your way back to the channel and also turn on notifications. All right, so let's stop wasting time, man. You guys came here for the class setup. So the first one we're gonna go over is the aggressive class setup. Keep in mind, this is for multiplayer. So for the muzzle, we're running with the monolithic suppressor. No need for explanation here. Most of you guys should know this by now, but long story short, if you don't know, monolithic suppressor adds about 10% to your damage range and it also at the same time gives you that sound suppression so that's why i'm running with the monolithic suppressor this is what is going to keep you alive in most matches because enemies won't know where your location is when you're using the weapon all right so a lot of you guys are going to say why aren't you running a barrel on this well if you take a look, this is an aggressive class setup. When you play aggressive, let's think about that. You play up close and personal or maybe engage in short to medium long range gunfights. So you don't really need a barrel. All a barrel does is that it increases your damage range. If we're playing up close, we don't need that extra 10 or 15% in damage range. So that's why we don't need a barrel on it. I did make a video solely on this class setup to show you guys in game of a gameplay of me using this setup and how effective it still is in multiplayer. Most of your engage are going to be within 30 meters or less anyway so you don't really need a barrel just want to clarify that all right so for the stock we're going to be running with the no stock yes i know this was nerfed a couple seasons ago but it is still effective if you use it correctly so we're playing up close and personal here and we don't really need to worry about the recoil too much because we're playing up close and personal and the closer you are to your target the more accurate your shots will be and plus this will give you a lot more movement speed as well to move around the map faster as well as aim down sides faster as you can see, those are the pros here. All right, so for the rear grip, we're running with stippled grip tape. If we're rushing our enemies, we want to be able to pull up our gun as fast as we possibly can. So we need that aim down sight speed as well as that sprint to fire speed. All right, so for ammunition, we're going to be running with 50 round mags. If you're going to be playing aggressive or you deep in the enemy spawn, you always want to make sure that you have enough ammo in reserve ready to go for the next person. All right, so for the underbarrel, we're running with the Merc foregrip. Now, I know this is where people might ask me, yo, what about the commando foregrip? grip well yes it does help with that side to side bounce but the thing with the merc foregrip is that it does still give you that vertical recoil control and if you're playing up close and personal you don't really need to worry about that recoil too much man and with the thing about the merc foregrip that a lot of people don't know is that it actually increases your movement speed so if we're playing aggressive this will allow us to help move around the map slightly faster so that's why i like the merc foregrip and plus it gives you added hip fire accuracy as well all right so moving on to the next class setup that I want to share with you guys is the no recoil M4A1 class setup. So this one's going to focus more for those players who don't really like to play aggressive. They like to hang back. They just like to beam people from long distance. So keep that in mind. And yes, this is a multiplayer class setup. So do not use this in Warzone. So for the muzzle, I'm going to be running with the monolithic suppressor. Same exact explanation that I made in the beginning of the video. And then for the barrel, this time we're using the Corvus Custom Marksman barrel. So this one's going to give us damage range, bullet velocity, and recoil control all important things if you're trying to beam your enemy now the reason why i didn't pick the stock m16 grenadier is because for two reasons number one we're playing multiplayer a lot of engagements are going to be within that medium range anyway so we don't really need that extra 10 percent range and another thing that a lot of people don't know about the stock m16 is that it actually reduces your aim down side speed and movement speed quite a bit versus the corvus custom marksman barrel so corvus custom is better suited for multiplayer because it doesn't have as many penalties as 
as far as aim down sight speed and movement speed goes. So for the laser, we're running with attack laser. So this is something new that I haven't used in a while. The main reason is because a lot of enemies, they're able to locate you if you're just constantly aiming down sights and it's just going to give away your position. However, one thing you have to keep in mind is to not aim down sights too long down a line of sight because that's when enemies are going to be able to locate you. So keep that in mind. So if you're aiming down a sight, maybe slightly move it somewhere where enemies won't be able to see it. And then once the target appears, that's when you move your crosshair over the enemy. Now, the main reason why I'm using TAC laser is because obviously aim down sight speed, that's going to help you out, bring your gun faster into ADS. But the main thing is aiming stability. Now, a lot of people don't know this, and this is actually something I didn't know either until I watched the video from the creator of that website, truegamedata.com that I'm always featuring. He now has a YouTube channel. I'll leave that link to that video in the description down below. Aiming stability is super important in getting a more accurate shot. It will give you a more consistent recoil pattern, and he shows that in the video. And that's exactly why I'm including this in this no recoil setup because aiming stability contributes to a much more accurate shot, and that's why it goes well with the overall theme with this class setup. So aiming stability is basically when you're aiming down sights and then you notice that your iron sights are swaying left and right. Well, with aiming stability, it helps keep your gun steady. So that's really what it is. All right, so for ammunition, we're running with 50 round mags. And for the underbarrel, again, we're using the Merc 4 grip. All right, so moving on to my all around class setup, this is gonna feature stealth, speed, as well as recoil control and damage range. So this is pretty much an all around class setup. And yes, this is still for multiplayer. So for the muzzle, we're running with the monolithic suppressor. Barrel's gonna be that Corvus custom marksman barrel. And for the stock, we're using the no stock attachment. And for ammunition, we're gonna be running with 50 round mags and for the underbarrel we're running with the mark 4 grip no need to really explain all of these because i literally just explained every single attachment in the previous class setups all right so next we're going to be moving on to our war zone class setup so this one i'm going to feature a variation there's going to be two variations but they're not going to be too different from each other it really just depends on your taste so for war zone we want to focus more on recoil control damage range and just being as accurate as possible all right so for the muzzle we're running with monolithic suppressor and then for the barrel we're actually using the stock m16 grenadier barrel and this is going to give us the most damage range that we could possibly get and that is the main reason why i'm using a stock m16 because why wouldn't you want to maximize that damage range most of your engagements in warzone are going to be very long range all right so this is the part where it's optional depending on your taste so for the optic i personally enjoy using the vlk optic for a couple of main reasons number one it helps you get a clearer sight on your target obviously the clearer vision you have on your target the better the accuracy will be and plus it is not that bad to use up close and personal as well because it doesn't obstruct your vision for opponents who are in your immediate area so that's why it's really great to use it's a very versatile attachment and that website truegamedata.com that i'm going to show you in a little bit it does effectively reduce that recoil control so these are one of the attachments that actually matter in helping with that recoil control now if you don't like to use optics on your m4 in warzone which i don't know why you wouldn't but you know there are players who do uh you could take off this optic and you can opt for the TAC laser. You know, this is again going to help with that aiming stability. So when you're aiming down sights and you're looking at a moving target, you'll get a much more steady shot. And also it does increase your ADS as well. So that's always not that bad. All right. So moving on, we're running with the 60 round mags. We just want to maximize the amount of ammo we have in our reserve. And then for the underbarrel, this is also going to be something that a lot of people are going to ask me about. Like, why am I not using the commando foregrip? Commando foregrip was effective a couple seasons ago, but after after a couple updates, you know, sometimes they do stealth updates here and there and they don't tell us what they change. But for me personally, I was using the commando foregrip and it just didn't feel the same. I felt like my gun was still going all over the place. So I went into a private match. I tested out these different attachments that people normally use, like the Merc foregrip, Ranger foregrip, commando, and operator. And I concluded that the Ranger foregrip helped me get the most accurate shot. So I'll pull up a screenshot here just so you guys can see what I'm talking about. The Ranger foregrip gave me the best results as far as controlling that recoil as much as possible and it gave me the smallest diameter and most consistent bullet pattern the operator foregrip gives you more of a penalty in ads speed anyway so the ranger foregrip does help in that aspect and it also does give you aiming stability which does make sense and goes along with the theme of how it helps you with recoil control all right so now that you've seen my five different variations of updated m4 class setups let's go ahead and transition over to the website this is pretty much an educational part of the video if you want to leave i don't blame 
blame you, but consider leaving a like. It will show me this is the kind of content that you want to continue to see. So let's go ahead and take a look at the barrel. And I want to talk about the Grenadier versus the Corvus Custom Marksman barrel. So the M16 barrel does give you a 40% increase in your damage range versus the Corvus Custom Marksman barrel, which is at 30%. So there really isn't much of a difference here, but the main difference is the ADS speed as well as that movement speed. So Corvus Custom has less of a penalty in ADS speed. So it makes a lot more sense to use this in multiplayer versus the stock M16 at 67 milliseconds for ADS speed. And as far as movement goes, same story applies. There is more of a negative to the stock M16 for movement speed versus the Corvus Custom. So this is exactly where I'm coming from when I tell you guys, hey, you know what? You got to use the Corvus Custom in multiplayer versus the M16 because the M16 is going to dramatically slow down your ADS speed as well as your movement speed. And of course, you don't want that because multiplayer is more of a fast paced game mode. You die a lot faster. So you want to be able to ADS and move faster as possible. So another thing that I do want to show you guys is the underbarrel, which is the Merc 4 grip. So earlier I was saying it does increase your movement speed, even though the game doesn't tell you. And as you can see here, this is going to increase your movement speed by 3.7% if you use the Merc 4 grip. So this is very important to know because like I said, the person who created this website, he's an engineer. He tests things at 240 frames per second. So we're getting the most accurate results as possible. This dude knows exactly what he's doing. If we also take a look at the Ranger 4 grip versus the Operator 4 grip, I did tell you guys that the Ranger has less of a penalty in ADS versus the Operator 4 grip. Yes, sure. The recoil patterns and recoil control does look similar, but you know what? Why would I want to use the Operator 4 grip if it clearly gives me the same results as far as recoil control goes, but it has more of a penalty in ADS. So that's why I'm choosing to go with the Ranger 4 grip because it gives me less of an ADS penalty. All right, now the last attachment that I do want to talk about is the TAC laser. I did mention that that aiming stability helps with recoil control. Now, I didn't mean that in a sense where it actually shows on paper that it controls your recoil control. It is something that is a practical thing that helps you out in the game because if you're aiming down sight and your weapon is moving left and right, you're going to have a harder time hitting your target. But with the Aiming Stability Pro, it's going to help your weapon stay as steady as possible. So it doesn't show here on paper. And that's why I'm telling you guys to go to that video that I'm linking down below in the description to go ahead and check out that video if you want more of an explanation of how Aiming Stability works. And also make sure to let him know Turbo Man sent you. All right, so going back to the site, once you've plugged in all of your attachments, you can go ahead and compare and contrast every single thing and look at all of these details here. So we're not going to go through every Every single little thing here but as you can see here we've got the aggressive class setup which is m4a1 number one no recoil is going to be number two and then this one's going to be the all around four and five are going to be the war zone variations so again we're going to play aggressive as possible with m4a1 number one that's why it doesn't have as much range to it but it's still effective if you think about it in multiplayer you don't really engage in long range combat anyway so not having a barrel is not really going to put you at a disadvantage ads is going to be much faster versus all of the other classes here because this is built around speed and aggression so i'll let you guys pause the video you know take a look at these stats if you want to but i just wanted to show you guys this website and how instrumental and how much of a learning tool this website is and crucial to learning about how your weapon works. So one thing I did want to point out is the vertical recoil. Just because it's a negative doesn't mean it's bad. Negative is good when it comes to vertical recoil. And like we said, M4A1 number two is the no recoil class setup. And here we go. It has the best recoil control versus the other two M4A1 setups we have for multiplayer. Now, as you can see for Warzone, we've optimized that as much as possible. It's got the best recoil control versus the multiplayer ones, obviously. In Warzone, you want to be focusing more on recoil control as well as that accuracy. So once you navigate to the view comparison chart, I also do want to explain this page quite a bit if you want to take a look at the time to kills. And you can do this for other weapons as well. You can compare and contrast the time to kills and then make your decision based on what you see here in the stats. So here we have the open bolt delay on and yes, uh, at a percentage of ADS time is going to be yes as well because we want to get the most accurate data as possible. And then we're going to put this at 100%. And we also will include that bullet time travel to target. So if you're looking at a multiplayer, you're going to get the best time to kill if you're using the most aggressive class setup. And like I said earlier, if you're within that 30 meter range, as you can see here, you are going to get the fastest time to kill out of all of these class setups. But the unfortunate part is that it doesn't have as much range. So when you see these bars extend out further, that means that these specific M4 M1 class setups have that barrel attached on it, either the Corvus or the M16, and that is what's going to extend your range. But the downside is that it doesn't have 
have the faster time to kill because with the barrel, it does have ADS negatives to it. And this is also accounting for ADS time. You know, it, it matters in a gunfight how fast you can pull up your weapon. So the faster you pull up your weapon, obviously you're going to get a faster time to kill result. So, so don't be turned off just because it has a slower time to kill versus one or the other. It really just depends on how you use the weapon. Uh, so yeah, guys, that's about it for this video. I just wanted to give you guys a quick clarification on some of the attachments that I do choose just to show you guys that I'm not BSing about these class setups. Hopefully you guys find this video helpful and make sure don't forget to check out truegamedata.com. Leave a like on this video if you found it educational and subscribe if you're new around here and I will see you guys in the next video. Peace.